All right, let's diagnose this right front wheel speed sensor circuit fault. Wiring diagram, first thing you need. And here are the right front and the left front wheel speed sensors. They're two wire sensors going to the ABS module. So preliminary check, I don't know if these are digital or um, variable reluctance type, but let's just try a uh, ohm measurement on each sensor. So on the left front, it's going to be pins 20 and 21 at the ABS module, and the wiring colors are yellow and light blue. So I located these ABS modules right here, connectors right here, took the cover off, yellow and light blue wires, pins 20 and 21. What's the resistance? 1 kilo ohm. So that's our known good. Now let's go to the right front sensor circuit and see if there's continuity. So right front wheel speed sensor. Pins four and five. About oh, 1.1 kilo ohms. So wiring integrity is just fine. We don't even need to lift the car or do anything there. Huh. How about that? In that case, let's uh we need to see the actual raw wheel speed sensor signal. So I want to compare the left that's not setting the code and the right that is setting the code. But keep in mind, this code sets even when the car is parked. It's not even moving. So it's a circuit check. So we need to measure the voltage on these wires because there's a signal wire and a low reference wire. Alright. Let's get a scope out. Go right to the signal wires, pin 4 and pin 20. And see if there is a discrepancy. Why is this ABS module fussing about the right sensor, not the left sensor? All right, so we're graphing all four wheel speeds right here. They're all reading. Now, right front did something strange. Let's uh, let's take it down the lane here. Okay, so there's definitely something wrong with the right front sensor, but only when you're going at slower speeds. So we're good to eight, seven, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Let's slowly start rolling again. Seems to be decent. We'll keep going here. See, there's discrepancies right here. It's not a smooth ramp, it was kind of jumpy. So I don't know. And now, the signals are identical, and we have no trouble codes. Okay. We definitely saw glitches before. The right front's perfect now. No dropouts, no glitches. All right, so just for good luck, I'm gonna give this connector a little squirt of deoxid here. All the pins. And plug it in, take it on a few more test drives, look at the scan data. And then all this thing needs is an AC Delco alternator. All right, so I, I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this was just turning around. See right there? I don't like that. Why did that happen? Right there, boom, boom. Right as you cross that three, four, five. 
right there. It dropped out to four and then back. Is that real live scan data or not? There's no codes right now. It could be a scanner malfunction or glitch. Let's just drive it around the block, see what happens. Okay, so there's definitely something going on. I actually felt the brake pedal, the ABS engaged when slowing down. We gotta put a scope on these signals here, and see exactly what the heck is going on. All right, two channels on the Pico scope. Channel one's gonna be the signal on the no good. That's the left front sensor. And channel two is on the weird one, the right front sensor. So we'll compare apples to apples on the Pico scope. All right, scope is rolling. Let's turn the key on. Let's separate these out. Put the red one down here. So left front, right front. Jump into EBCM and look at the scan data and compare it to what the scope sees. See if the glitches are correlated to something weird in the raw signal. So no codes. Let's just read data stream. We'll do left front and right front wheel speeds. Grab that. Okay, let's roll. Okay, so I just started rolling. And check this out. We have these weird glitches for no reason. And, and the actual wheel speed is this. But what the heck is are these things? As soon as we started rolling. Is that a bad connection? If we unplug the wheel speed sensor, will that go high? Now this is a zero to five volt scale, so these bumps were only going up to about two and a half volts. So is that a broken wire or a bad sensor? But let's uh, let's get up to like 10 miles an hour. All right, this is pretty crazy. I'm just standing here. And I'm gonna rock the steering wheel left and right. Look at that. See the dropouts? Not setting a code yet. Start rolling here. These signals are getting bigger because we're rolling faster. Oh. That's a cool capture. Okay, this is very neat. So, when we're standing still and just turning the steering wheel left and right, definitely some dropouts, some big ones, right here especially. And then we started moving. Look at these dropouts. Boom, boom, boom. It has to be a broken wire. It has to be. So we have to take off the right front wheel. Let's keep going to the next capture. Here we're slowing down. Right there. Nice dropout. So it's interesting it hasn't set a code yet for this. So if you unplug the sensor, I'm sure the voltage goes up to whatever, three or two and a half volts bias. The sensor is supposed to pull that down and modulate it. So very neat, there's definitely a problem. Without an oscilloscope, you'd be guessing. The guy already replaced his wheel hubs. That sounds pretty expensive. It might just be an almost broken wire at a connector. So let's, um, let's get back in the garage and we could either hook up a scope or a voltmeter and just wiggle wires until we see the voltage on the signal wire go up to the bias. We already have the scope hooked up with the key on. We'll take off the right front wheel, do a little wiggle check. It might be at the flex because when you're turning the steering wheel, wherever that wire is flexing, this probably, uh, it's almost broken. It's probably hanging on by like one strand. Car's jacked up, live data key is on. So all I'm going to do is just shift the wheel left and right and you guys are going to look at the scope. This is crazy. Even now the signal is on the right front is kind of not happy. You can see it's getting elevated. But look what happens when we turn the wheel left and right. Boom. Drop out. Drop out. So let me pop the wheel off 
When you spin the wheel, no problem. But when you turn it left and right, big problems. So we have to find this almost broken wire. All right, so the front, right front wheel's off securely on jack stands. And here's the wire going to the ABS sense, right along the control arm. And then it bends right here. And I'm sure the brake's gonna be right here. So here's the scope. Let's roll it. And I'm just gonna wiggle right down here. There it is. Perfect. Let's uh let's go for the kill. Alright, we're gonna try to get this kill shot live. What is hiding in here? I'm sure it's gonna be a broken wire. One of these two. Still watching the scope, we're still getting dropouts. Should we pull? Oh, open circuit guys, open circuit. Which one is it? Boom, both of them. Looks like it was repaired already with some tape. Both wires snap right off. Bingo, we're done. Um, let's fix this up with solder, heat shrink, wrap this up so the flex isn't as, uh, as tight. And uh, we should be good to go. All right, so. TS100 soldering iron, shrink wrap. We're gonna solder these two wires together and then we're gonna to have to structurally reinforce these because they're gonna keep bending. It's a terrible design. This can't possibly last long term, but it solves the customer complaint. I'm wondering, um, the break in this hard insulation, why was that there? Was it, I don't think these were previously repaired. This is factory, so this, spot for bending is just there <laughs> and there's no way around it and the axles right here you know we can't like give this more flex or more wiggle room it's gonna bend here anyway so it's gonna last a while longer but it is what it is all right let's toast on the shrink wrap Wrap this up with tape. I mean, the wires are fairly flexible. Put the conduit back on there. As good as it's gonna get. All right, so after the wiring repair, spin the wheel, get good signal. We turn it left and right. No more problems. So customer complaint addressed. Most excellent, no parts required on that one. So all he needs now is uh, an OEM alternator. All right, I just spoke to the customer about the Buick LaCrosse. Um, we fixed the parasitic drain, we fixed the ABS problem, no parts required, and the alternator, he will take care himself. Um, the OEM unit is ridiculously expensive, it's like $400, so he's gonna try maybe to find um, a regulator, genuine regulator to um, put in the previous alternator which is stamped AC Delco but who knows eBay Amazon those things just don't um, don't work very well um, so that's it for this one pretty neat case study thanks a lot for watching we'll see you on the next one bye bye